Good morning, everybody. This is Gail. I had promised you a tutorial on how to do a leaf cane, and I'm hopefully going to have time to show you three different ways of making leaf canes. There's so many different ways to do them. I'm going to show you probably the the most used and maybe one that's even probably the most interesting. Now one thing I wanted to tell you is this is a petal cane that I did. Remember on my last video where we did the pink flower and I did where you uh, cut them and squish them together, that kind of thing? You, this is one in blue, but you can make this blue into a leaf cane. And if I did that, what I would do is probably still leave this pinched in here you have it rounded uh, at the top for a petal, but if you pinch that, this isn't conditioned, so it's beginning to crack a little bit. This has been sitting for quite a while. But if you pinch that side, then you have a pretty blue leaf. And who says that leaves have to be green? But see that? you can. So you can use the petal that I taught you in the pink uh, flower cane, which I will try to link to it if I can remember. Um, but if I do, it'll be a little eye up on the top of your screen. But anyway, that's one way to make a petal cane, I mean a leaf cane. Just take your petal, make it in green and whatever color, green and white, green and yellow, green and beige, whatever colors you want, and you will have your own little uh, leaf. So that was one idea, not one of the three. This was just something extra that I just found when I was going through my stuff. Uh, I'm not going to show you the basics. Most, Some of these, at least two of these, start with a Skinner Blend plug. And again, I showed you how to do that in previous tutorials. This one I chose to do, instead of a big difference, in uh, white and green, I decided to go with a lighter uh, green. This is Spanish Olive and Jungle, Primo Spanish Olive and Jungle. So that's what I'm going to use today. And for this one, the shorter and stubbier you can make your, can your log, your plug, the better. And I'll show you why. Let me press it down. Make sure you keep it round. And I'll show you what why this is. I mean, you can try it with it being tall and skinny, but I don't do very well that way. So, okay. So, we have sort of a short, stubby plug. And this is lighter in the center than it is on the outside. Now what I'm going to do is cut, I'm going to slice this cane. I'm going to put evenly spaced, well they don't even have to be even, but let me just slice and don't be afraid that you're going to ruin your plug. It's still going to be there. Okay, now I've cut that into several different pieces. Now what I'm going to do is I've, I've got some black rolled out to the number 5. And I'm just going to slice it off to the length I think I need. And what I'm going to do is take each one of these sides off and lay it on the black and trim around it. I'm sorry I'm out of frame on that, but all I'm doing is trimming around the cane. I'll show you here. See where all I did was I put, I laid this on the black. I changed my work surface so that you could see better because my other one had so many lines on it, which is great for working on because you can measure your inches and everything, but it wasn't very good when it came to videoing, so I put my white tile out. 
and everything is kind of in a different place now. But anyway, that's going to be there. And then I'm going to take the next one off and put it right back on it in the same position that it came off. So you're going to have black. You're going to have black in between. Maybe if I pan out a little bit, that'll make it easier. Okay, now I'm going to take this double stack, the one with the, the line in it, and I'm going to lay this on black. And trim it. Just trim off the edges so you don't have a lot of excess black. And you see where we're going here? We're going to put a layer of black between each one of these slices. And you just reassemble the plug back the way it was. And put it on the next. And you keep doing this until it's all it's all got the black in between. There's only two more, so I won't even pause the video. I'll just do it so you can see what's going on. Let me bring some more black out. And I like to trim it closer to the size that I need rather than slice up all my clay. I'll just do it this way. And then move this out of the way trim that put on the next slice, we're almost done should do it. And you're saying, what kind of leaf is this? It sure looks like a wonky leaf. Well, now we're going to, let me slice some of this black off so it doesn't get in the way. Now what we're going to do is we're going to slice this diagonally right down the middle. And no, we're let's see the let's see. Let's do it that way. You want it at a good angle, and I'll show you why when we do it. Slice right down. I probably need a sharper blade. So now you've got two pieces. Now what you're gonna do is flip this piece over and see that all the veins now, it looks like veins in a leaf. And you can take your slice. I'm not going to take it all the way to the end. I like to leave a little bit of space on mine. So I'm going to move it up a little bit rather than going all the way to the end. For those of you that don't have one of these, these little kidneys, I think they're called, potters use them to form their clay. But they are really handy for scooping up and things, and it saves the edge on your blade. I'm so prone to using the edge on my blade. So anyway, then we're going to put this together with the black in the middle and squeeze it. And there's your leaf. And all you need to do now is reduce it. Now you can do this in, like I said, so many colors. Um, Clue, Karen Lewis, if you know, if you've heard of Karen Lewis, she goes by the name of Clue. And uh, who else does a lot of leaves? Lynn Schwarzenberg. You'll see that their leaves aren't green. Their leaves are purple and pink and blue and but they're gorgeous colors but anyway I'll show you how to reduce this because I don't know if I've shown you that before but just start squeezing in the center here like form a waist 
and as you're doing this kind of push in like I'm pushing in this way as you're doing that and it will push the clay out and hopefully since this clay has been sitting overnight it it's the same temperature on the inside but just keep pinching because you eventually want to where you made it thick here on the end you want to even that out so then you do it again and so you have a registration mark here on the bottom which is where the black that goes in that's your center vein so just make sure that always stays on the bottom and just continue to push and when it gets nice and warm you can pull it a little bit twist it to warm up the inside I don't want to reduce this, but so far, because I have a zillion leaf canes, so I might keep this big. Oh, actually, well, I'll probably reduce it later. Anyway, just keep pulling, tugging, twisting, and uh, you can roll it if you want, if you want this to stay round at the bottom. But let me... Let me just slice down the middle or near the middle. I'll slice here. So you can see the leaf. But isn't that pretty? It's a pretty double toned green leaf. So this was uh, leaf number one. That one was probably the easiest. Uh, leaf number two is going to be similar. Again, I rolled out Spanish olive on a number one setting of my pasta machine, and I rolled out some black on a number five. And hopefully, I have enough black. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut strips of the green however many that'll give me about maybe an inch wide and then I'm gonna I'm out of frame again because I moved it closer to me I'm going to cut these in half this one's a little wonky on one side so I'll only be using the bottom half but that gives me five sections I'll probably need to recondition some of this black that I already used, but we'll do that when the time comes. Let me trim this one down to a little bit more of a rectangle. Okay, again, we're going to take black. Let's see, let's make them all about the same size. And let's do it this way. I think I'll get more out of it that way. And back the green. Back the green with the black. And lay it down. And take another rectangle and another piece of black. This one's a little bit skinnier than the other one, so I'll just slice off a little bit. Actually, I'll use this one. That's a better size. Put that on the black and trim it. I'm going to put this on top of that one. And if the green doesn't go all the way to the edge, that's okay. You can just push it a little bit or we'll trim that side when we're going to look and see what we're doing. Lay that on top. So you see we're building a, a brick that's green, black, green, black, but the black is much thinner. So I'm going to do this one. On the black. And 
lay that on top of this and I'm just going to be a little bit short of clay so if you'll excuse me for just a second I'm going to run this through the pasta machine real quick just to make another sheet of number five black clay. There we go. So let's do this again. And since I ran it through the pasta machine it's going to be a little bit ragged but that's okay it's clay. You can cut off the ragged edges. And then top it off with green. You want green to be your top and your bottom color. I'm not going to trim it. I'm going to leave it the way it is. See how unragged it, how ragged it is? It's uneven. But what we're going to do here is we're going to pinch the bottom. And you just pinch until you bring that together. And pinch this till it comes together and then we can trim the top after we see where it's going to pinch together. Now I'll trim off that black and bring it up because and this is another simple leaf cane. Right here. This one's kind of long. Now, it's really nice if you want to do something like a lily that's got long, skinny uh, leaves. You can pull this out this, this way and make it longer. Or you can do like we did the other one and press it in and make it smaller to make a smaller cane, a, a smaller leaf. What I like to do is actually, but this isn't quite wide enough, if I'd made a longer cane, I would have cut it in half and made one, uh, one half into a long cane and one half into a short cane. But this one isn't really wide. If I cut this in half, I'm not going to have enough to really reduce it well. So that was cane. That's leaf number two. Now leaf number three is the most complicated, but it's probably the most fun. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this one in gold. And my gold split because I tried to pull it up. This is 18 karat gold. Let me run this through the pasta machine and feel that seam. Time just to make sure it's healed. But what I'm going to do with this, instead of using black, I'm going to wrap this in gold. Let me make an even edge here. And I'll trim it on the other side of the cane to make another even edge. Actually, I didn't really trim close enough. Let me do a little bit more because you don't want a bunch hanging over the edge. I'm just slinging clay everywhere this morning. And that's got a pretty even edge to it. So I'm just going to take this, lift it with your blade, and wrap this. Now I've wrapped it to where it overlaps and then I unwrap it and I don't know if you can see this or not. Can you see? See this little line right here? That shows you where you want to cut your clay. If you do that, because what, what happened was the top layer made a little dent and when you bring it over to match it, it matches perfectly. And you don't have to guess about the length of your clay. Now, in order to make this leaf, I'm going to have to 
reduce it. So let's start, let's roll it first so that we heal this seam here. Or you can use it as a registration mark, it doesn't matter. Pull, roll. And when you're doing this, it's always good when you're reducing a cane. Oh, I'm still up, I'm sorry. It's good to roll a cane like in this direction and then flip it over and then roll it because some, you, you're human. If you're right-handed or left-handed, it's going to make a difference in the pressure that you're putting on the cane. And this it keeps it from being too wonky. Now let me... Oh, I forgot to tell you. What I did with this plug, I made a Skinner Blend plug of uh, Primo um, Jungle and Sunshine, which is the yellow. It's a nice, pretty, pale yellow. It's not a bright yellow like Cad Yellow or anything. But just keep reducing. You'll probably get too long to work with, so just cut it in half and then continue reducing. And I would say to reduce this down to maybe um, three-eighths of an inch or so. And always cut down to good clay when you're doing this. And I could tell by the feel that that end had gone in quite a bit. So uh, let me do the other one to the same length or same width. It won't necessarily be the same width. Let me get rid of this because this is going to be a problem. see how much I've got here. This one is five and a quarter inches. And this is six and a half, so that's like eleven and three quarters. I think I'll probably pull this out to six inches. That's good. Actually, it's a little bit more than six inches, but that's all right because actually, I don't know if I've ever shown you how to scrunch, which is a technical term. This end was a little bit smaller than the rest of it, so you just push it together, and I reduced my length to six inches. So I think I'm going to make this two inches long so let me cut at two and four. The reason I cut twice is because when I cut on my ruler the the thickness of the ruler doesn't cut so I have to go back and finish cutting that. So there's three. Make this the same diameter, which really doesn't matter a whole lot because you'll see in a little bit. Let me see what we've got here. I've got eight inches. All right, so hopefully that'll work. That'll be enough. So let me cut this in twos at six, four, and two. I do much better in my math with my math in the mornings. I think the other night I was doing my flower cane and somehow or other I got really messed up. So now we've got six, seven of these little wrapped um, Skinner Blend um, bullseye beads or canes. So now what we're going to do is smash it down. See that? Smash it down to about that size. And 
and do that with all of them. I know this looks weird for a leaf cane, but wait till you see what we get. And sometimes I was just wanted to show you, you can wrap your cane your plugs before you do the canes. Um, and that sometimes gives you a different look. I like wrapping mine with green or gold or even white, depending on that. Sometimes I put the white to the outside and use the color on the inside of the cane. There's just so many so many variances that you can do with polymer clay. I think that's one of the reasons I like it so much. And for those of you that don't know, I've been doing polymer clay for about 16 years now. And my very first class that I went to was with Donna Cato. And oh my gosh, I think Donna has got to be the queen of polymer clay. If you have never looked at any of her videos or any of her tutorials or got any of her books, you've got to do so. And she has a, a website called Craft Art EDU. And it's a, it's a paid, that she does have some free, um, free videos on there, it's free tutorials, but it's Craft Art Dot edu and it's amazing that she has got not only polymer clay but there's other um, media in there also in you know felting and beading and all kinds of different things but there's lots of free non-paid tutorials in there so if you get a chance go to that and look at it and I mean you've got some when you look at them, uh, if you want to put in polymer clay and then do a search for free, all the free videos will come up. And there's some really good tips in there. And I probably bought about 20 of the tutorials that are in there just because they're just so much fun. But anyway, back to where our leaf came. All right, so we've got all of these. So I'm going to take one, and I'm just going to lay it lay it on my table. Then I'm going to take another one and I'm going to lay it not all the way on it. Try to make it the same length even if you have to stretch. But just let it lean up against that one and let it come down to your work surface. And do the same thing with the next one. I'm trying to remember who I learned this from. I believe, I don't know. I want to say Kim Cavender. While I'm doing this, I'll just keep talking. Um, I was a member of the Orlando area Polymer Clay Guild, and we were so fortunate. First off, we were good friends with Donna Cato, and she came every year. We would have a retreat, and she would come every year and teach. And one year, she told us that she was afraid people were getting tired of her classes and suggested that we bring in two other artists. So we brought in Kim Cavender and Leslie Blackford. And we did the most wonderful weekend, long weekend. And it, back then, it was called Florida in February. Now it's called Fandango, but if you ever get a chance to go to the Orlando area Fandango, it is so much fun. It is you get uh, you can there's an option if you don't want to pay for classes, you can go and just retreat and still be with the people that take classes, so you get to learn a lot from them. You can um, you get classes with three different artists. And you go in on the first day, you find your workplace, you sit down, and that's where you stay for the entire four or five days. 
and the artist rotate runes, but you get a full day's instruction from each of three artists, and it is just awesome. So much fun. So, okay, so now you're wondering what I've got. Well, let me look here. You see what I have? So what I'm going to do now is cut this in half. Let me measure for a change. I'm not the best at measuring, and then I'll fuss at myself when I don't get the half mark. So, let's see. If I move that four, and it's about six and a quarter, so that's about an inch and an eighth. It doesn't take but a second to put a ruler up here, but I am just not the best at doing that. And again, what we're going to do is take the gold clay Lay it down and put this on it and trim it. And then we're going to put it together. And we put it together and look at that. That looks like a fern leaf almost. And you have the same options as you do for this one. You can push it in and make it a smaller, rounder leaf, or you can reduce it out and make it a long, fern-type leaf. But those are my three fern leaf, my three leaf canes that I'm going to show you today. There's so many more variations. There's so many other different ways to make leaf canes, and I'm sure there are plenty on YouTube and every place else. If you just do a search for polymer clay tutorials, there's a lot that are written tutorials and PDFs that you can download And if you like to have a piece of paper to look at. But these are my three canes. Let me cut this end off just because it's a little wonky and it won't sit straight. So these are my three canes. There you go. So I hope you like this. I hope you will experiment with these three canes. I'd love to see what you do with them. Um, I, you know, just use your imagination. Take these three different types of canes and then use your imagination. Come up with other colors, other methods. You can, you know, show me some of the things that you came up with that are different. But anyway, this will be number two in my series of canes. I think I put the bracelet cane in the playlist. I do, I'm doing a playlist. This would be number two. And uh, I did the flowers, and now this is the leaves. So make you some leaves and have fun. Let me see what you do. I'll be back soon. Thanks. Bye.